Hello. Okay. So I am going to talk to you in a timed manner about this tiny little web framework that I made called PermaWeb, which is just for me. Uh, but maybe one day uh, some, we can learn some lessons from it. Uh, bring it along. Okay. So a few years ago, I'm a hacker. I got my own personal website. I generated it statically. Yeah, I've got a website. <laughs> you know, looked like this. Um, made a lot of hacker-friendly choices. Static site generated, cool. Jekyll, very future-forward, future-friendly, easy to edit. All these technologies. I even wrote my own Octopress extension, which connected to Flickr, which I used to use. So, uh, had some fancy imaging in JavaScript, and of course, you know, for reliable. Revival communication of all the little thoughts that I have, I connected to the Twitter JavaScript API. And nothing worked in a few years. Look at all my hacker-friendly choices. Octopress, which was the cool framework at the time, just sort of disappeared. Uh, Jekyll still worked, but it was Octopress Je Jekyll. And the rest of these like sort of slowly sank into the mud until I was left with, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, so. What went wrong? Um, I mean, I made all these hacker-friendly choices, I thought. Uh, here's the lesson to learn. Everything will break, and much sooner than you think. Uh, so I happened upon this site, like lots of you did, and the, found out there was a whole conference about it, uh, permacomputing. And they have these interesting principles, and I, I've just bolded two that I think are really interesting. Accumulate wisdom and experience rather than code base. Design for descent, and we have the same, we used to have this word that we talked about in web development for graceful degradation. But what's the graceful degradation of your own tool chain? So, well, one answer is maybe you should just write the whole site in raw HTML. And you can be on this uh, lovely graphic from cream.org showing the uh, map of people who blog about their own site setups. <laughs> you can be the weird dude who writes raw HTML. <laughs> So here's a weird dude who writes raw HTML. Dan Liu, a lot of you probably know him. Excellent writer, super interesting insights. Uh, not the most user friendly, even some accessibility issues maybe with reading this. So can a fruit of a cuticuting site look nice? Here's my answer, right? Simple raw HTML, simple. Transform it to better HTML in stages. If any stage breaks for any reason, you just take what you had and pass it to the next stage. So here's like the rough framework that I have now with my very simple demo site for this. Failure embracing HTML transformation head, uh, what do I call it? Pipeline, there. Uh, and here's like an example. Here's like one small part, like let's extract the title and make the title look pretty. So we have the source HTML, which is like a raw title. We're gonna transform it to a pretty title. We're gonna validate that what we have is still HTML and something hasn't messed up and finally we pass it to the next phase. So if the transform script fails, then we just go to the output. Also, if validation fails, we just take the source and push it on to the next phase. Maybe the thing that adds meta tags is gonna work. Uh, and the title thing failed. So that's a problem because if I wanna remake my site, I'm basically gonna run five or six steps on every single file all the time. To make it fast, I hash the entire transformation. The source, the input source, the transform script, the validation script, they'll hash to some number, that goes into a cache, and then I can basically run every transformation all the time on every file extremely fast. Uh, so here, and then it was what technologies to choose. Uh, you always have to assume you're somewhere in the middle of the last point of the technology you're using. Uh, React might have been around for 10 years. Maybe it'll be around for 10 years more. We'll see. So I chose for this 30-year-old technology, make and bash running on Unix. Ancient computing concepts, tiny engine. But every transformation script can be written in anything. You can write it in Rust, you can write it in Elixir, you can write it in JavaScript, you can write it in Python. It doesn't matter because those are the parts that are designed to break. The central part is like a tiny, tiny little bash script that is powered by make. That'll last for hopefully the next 40 years. So this is what my website looks like today. It's pretty simple. This is not as gorgeous as I would love to show you today. And in, this is my CV. Uh, I'm looking for work. <laughs> But if in 10 years, every single part of it that broke this website, that made this website work was left and all I had was the raw HTML being passed from my source up to my hosting provider, it would look like this. It would look like Dan Lu's site. 
Uh, and that's also if in 10 years I never get another job because it still shows that I, my last job was in June 2024. Anyway, uh, not intended to be an advertisement. That's my talk. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> I guess my hosting provider, but <laughs> like I, but but I'm, I'm gonna r I'm like r syncing it now. So and, and eventually I'll just be putting it on S3 compatible APIs. So it's uh, it's pr it's pretty solid right now. 